So we'll be doing transducers. If you bought one of these, it's unusable. But it can be made usable. This is a value. So, if you want to use these, peel this off. There's a protective strip on here. Don't worry about that. Take all of it off. Everything. Uh, you'll have to take this off and then you start using isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. Or scrape all the crap off of here. The it's thin foam and it's no good. Now, To use these, I usually take one of these and just snip it off right here at the junction, at the three-way junction. Two of them is fine. They're too big to put three on. What's inside this is this. This little guy, these are real nice. This is all you need. The rest of this is hurting the sound in many ways. Um, so here's one of, this is the, this is, I'm starting to remove the foam, you can see. And, uh, I want to see if we can pop it open. Need my glasses. Um, I got something going. I don't want to cut myself. This is a sharp exacto knife. Ah, this is for educational purposes. Oop, educational purposes. We just snapped it open. The main. Oh, look! This one is gigantic. Usually they're much smaller. Um, it's the same one. Uh, I've taken these apart, and the transducer is much smaller. Um, this transducer is oversized and it's going to be that much harder. Um, what I do, the main purpose for this assembly is to act as a strain relief for the little wires that are soldered on. We'll deal with these later. Uh, I've kind of nullified my point because anyway, these come in various sizes. There's a pie piezo ceramic um, substance deposited on a brass substrate and <clears throat> this with two wires going to your output jack like this one um, is really all you need you can use two of these and it'll be more than what you need um, the trouble is we have no strain relief and <clears throat> If you're going to use these, you leave the top on, drill a hole in here, but don't go through here, just break through, open it up, and fill it full of, uh, not full, but a sizable amount of 5-minute epoxy. The thing about these transducers is they're transducing in both directions. We created an echo chamber for this thing to reverberate off of, and it needs to be attenuated with a mass of crazy glue or epoxy. Epoxy will dry in five minutes. That much crazy glue will take almost overnight. Never mind. Um, to make this robust, we're going to have to strain relief these wires so that they, uh, they're soldered. here and here and it's a good solder joint there's no nothing wrong with the solder joint but it just flexing back and forth is going to cause a eventual breakage so um, what we're going to do is I've stripped these this is the really the only hard part is to skin or strip these back so you can solder them 
I have a special little uh, stripper that I can set. I, I call it Stormy. Anyway, you have to grip these firmly in order to strip the stuff off. And these are easier because the wires are more robust. So we're going to turn the soldering iron on, tin these, and put the metal, the brass one, which is black, to the ground. And we're going to put the surround the piezo side thing generating voltage to the hot wire, which in this case is white. We'll be back. Well, I just did a video that I didn't have the thing turned on. So what I've done is soldered the uh, white one to the red piezo side and the ground to that. And uh, we need to restrain this somewhere in the process. This is our old five-minute epoxy. Yeah, I'll make a little more. We're making a very good transducer, better than what you can buy. And it has a mass you can measure in grams. Almost no mass. And uh, all like that. All right. Now we're creating the strain relief. We're making it robust and attenuating the transducer all in one swell foop. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little. And I'll put some more of the goop on there. I mean, it's a fairly primitive operation when you're... But this is a... Uh, I have a patent in the field of... Uh, Installing ultrasonic level gauging equipment using these transducers, uh, and uh, I was in charge of the project to package the transducer in motor fuel resistant packaging. And uh, there are rules. <laughs> And I don't think they're being followed in those transducers that are being sold. Anyway, we've got a big old lump of epoxy on here. If any of it runs over, that's okay. Now this is going to dry for 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, I'm just going to put a little more on to make it look pretty. It's a complete little button now. Got an epoxy button on it. Everything is captured. The solder joints of the conductors to the transducer surfaces are now captured. Um, and all like that. The last thing we'll do is heat shrink these two to make sure they don't touch, obviously. And it's ready to install. You can do the whole thing in an hour with 45 minutes of relaxing time. So, kind of a neat little button. We'll put the uh, heat shrink on.
kind of looks like a bug. It's an ugly bug. Let's go see if it'll make noise. So, ouch, I just pulled on it. Plug it in. That's plugged in. Very quiet. And there it is, folks. Boom, 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 boom. So, we have a transducer. Right now, I've turned the treble up for some reason. Okay, that's straight. There will be no clicky-clacky with this transducer. 